reason for that in just a second. But it is a flood, and in Arizona in particular. And if you looked at the national results last year, it was declared by most of the news media to be the year of dark money. It came in and influenced races all across the country, but nowhere as much as it did here in Arizona. In most places, 5, maybe 10 percent at the most of the non-candidate related cash that was spent on campaigns was dark. In other words, nobody knew really where it came from. The name on the check was one of these mysterious organizations, you know, Citizens for Better Government, Citizens for, you know, good things and sweetness and light. The 501c4s, which are nonprofit foundations, normally founded for educational purposes. But in this case, because they figured out that they could get away with it, they're founded specifically to put money into political campaigns. And these are campaigns that they run. In other words, they don't contribute to candidates. They go out and produce ads, put them on the TV, and then it will say underneath Committee for Patients' Rights, which is one of them. Um, the uh, Plus 60 Association, which is the one that attacked me in the last election. Uh, they're out of Virginia. Uh, but the common denominator here is that they are all non-disclosing of who, or who contributed to them. So you see the name on the check, but you have no idea who's actually behind <coughs> that expenditure. Well, here in Arizona, they ran the table. Uh, as I hate to bring up any painful uh, memories, but all of the statewide campaigns in which dark money played, and that was governor, Secretary of State, Attorney General, and Corporation Commission. They won. Both seats in the Corporation Commission, both in the primary and in the general, because they played a very heavy hand in the Republican primary. This is an equal opportunity to destroy, believe me. They come after Republicans as well as Democrats that don't agree with them. So I believe we really have to take this threat very seriously. Why? And I know you can fill in the blank, but let me just give you a couple of the answers. Um, one is, and, and people tell me this all the time, why does my vote count if I look at an ad and I don't even know who's behind it? I don't know if it's somebody or some force that I agree with or something that I don't agree with. And I think that's a pretty powerful argument for folks to think about. But then there's more. What dark money does is it disassociates the responsible contributor. Somebody back there actually heard that money. And normally, when they express themselves in the political process, you would hold them accountable if they said something wrong, something false. But because of dark money, it goes through three or four intermediaries, and there at the end, an ad is paid for that may be false. I can tell you it's almost always negative. I can only think of one or two that were not, and they're the aberrations. They're the, the, the exception that proves the rule. But let me just give you one example. You probably remember the last election, the ads against Sandra Kennedy, running for the Corporation Commission. Has everybody got that in their mind? They made her sound like a garden variety criminal. I don't think I'm exaggerating a bit. And, you know, dark, rainy pictures and a bunch of headlines. Turned out those headlines and the, and the bankruptcy, or rather the, uh, the collection action that was filed against her corporation, her husband's corporation action, was, I think, what was the case, 10 years ago? Something like that. And they made it sound like it happened just yesterday and that she'd been ripping off uh, her lenders. Not true. They paid all their debts. They were fine. But that dark money paid for that ad. And if you wanted a retraction, who did you ask? Whoever was running the dark money organization was a shill. I mean, they were somebody that was out there just to be a, uh, to take a fall. Now, how did it all happen? Uh, you probably remember a you know, Supreme Court case, 2010, on Citizens United. Citizens United did not authorize dark money. Many people think it did. But it did authorize corporate contributions. Prior to 2010, they were illegal in Arizona. A corporation could not contribute directly to a political campaign or in any way try to influence your vote. Citizens United decided that corporations were people. You all believe that. You can go out and shake hands with one. And that money is speech. So they essentially meant that corporate contributions and the political realm, corporate participation, was now authorized. 
Well, I don't want to get out too far on a limb, but I think I think you would agree that corporations are somewhat risk averse. In other words, if they can avoid getting out there and taking a strong stand in a political item and taking the consequences from it, they will do that. Because they don't want customers to come back and think badly of them. They don't want their shareholders to potentially <coughs> revolt. There are a lot of things that they don't want. And here's something else that is characteristic of most corporations prior to this. They all had PACs. They said they didn't participate, but they did through their PACs. And those PACs balanced the, the ledger. They usually were approximately equal between the, the Democrats and the Republicans. But with dark money, they don't have to worry about it. They can put all their money on one side or the other, and nobody will hold them accountable. And so although most corporate money that was in 2012, except in Arizona, was disclosed, in Arizona, most of it was dark. So we really don't know who was trying to influence our vote, whether it was in-state or out-of-state, or who was behind some of those really insidious ads. And as I said, they ran the table. Uh, Lucy was clearly elected with dark money, and in fact, his chief of staff, Kirk Adams, was the executive of one of the dark money organizations. So it's close, it's fair. And here's the thing that I'm so concerned about, and I hope you are too. As I said, it's, except in Arizona, most corporate money that played in the political role was disclosed. You knew who was doing it, who was making the contribution. But not in Arizona. If, if we get through another cycle, and everybody thinks it's just okay, because let me emphasize, there's nothing illegal. Let's assume that APS in fact put money in the last election. They didn't do anything illegal. They hid it, so we don't know if they did or not. Lori Roberts thinks they did. A number of other people think it was a pretty good case. But I have to say, have, if they were the ones that did it, there's nothing illegal about it. If, in fact, we go through another cycle and they continue to win and they continue to find they can hide their tracks, all the corporate contributions are going to be dark. So I think we absolutely have a obligation in this next round. Now, we tried, several legislators tried to get something going in the last legislative session. You probably know about that one. Uh, Representative Ken Clark, for example, proposed a just a transparency amendment from the floor in the House of Representatives. You know what happened? They punished him. They took two of his bills that were scheduled for a hearing and pulled them off the agenda so that he didn't get not only did he not get his amendment uh, passed or even heard, but two of the things that he was supporting got taken away. So his district got penalized, he got penalized. We all stood to lose. So in the legislature right now, people either were recipients of dark money and therefore are grateful. They are hopeful that in the next one, they might be able to get dark money, or they're afraid, and this is important, they're afraid of the punishment that might come if they dare to stand up. So as a result, nobody in leadership and practically nobody in the rank and file of the legislature is willing to stand up and be accountable on this point. So it's going to have to be up to us. We're going to have to do a citizen's initiative, and that's what Casey and I have been working on for the last several months. We actually have a draft of it here. Uh, we're trying to winnow it down from eight pages to uh, something that would be easier to put on a petition. But the bottom line of this initiative will be full disclosure. And the key point is that for every contribution, every political expenditure, every money that's spent to influence an election, you have to disclose what the original source of that money was. That doesn't mean the one that wrote the last check. My original source, we're defining as the first entity in the chain of contributions who actually earned the money. The first in the chain who didn't receive a majority of their income from contributions or gifts. Now these 501c4s that we're talking about, the only way they get money is from gifts. In other words, there's what we call the Russian dolls. There's one on the outside and there's one on the inside and there's another one inside that and another one inside that. And each one contributes to the other so that you can't find who the original contributor was. I think this statute It'll be tried in court. I know they'll come after it. But I believe it very simply and precisely identifies what we need to get after, which is the original contributor of the money.
things I know you're going to hear from the folks who are defending our money, who think that it's just the American way, is that you have a right under our Constitution to remain secret. And I want to turn that around and say you have no right to hide. And that, in fact, is what the Supreme Court has said. And it's been said by some Supreme Court justices that might surprise you. I don't usually quote Justice Scalia. But if you've got one of our handouts here, it's got a quote on it that I'd like to read to you. Um, it basically says that requiring people to stand up in public for their political acts fosters civic courage without which democracy is doomed. For my part, I do not look forward to a society which, thanks to the Supreme Court, campaigns anonymously and even exercises the direct democracy of initiative and referendum hidden from public scrutiny protected from the accountability of criticism. And this is the key phrase. This does not resemble the home of the brave. Written by the most conservative justice, by maybe the second most conservative justice of the Supreme Court. California probably has the most aggressive of the anti-dark money programs. The other ones that, sh that find our Arizona citizen, Sean Noble, a million dollars to turn one bit. Bear in mind that in 2012, Sean Noble, in the state of Arizona, moved over $130 million of dark money through his bank account. That just gives you an idea of some of the volume that we're dealing with. If we don't take a stand against it, it's going to be the rule. Now, every every campaign has these have a song. I'm not going to sing, but I would like to recite to you the, uh, uh, and I commend to you the, uh, the website. Uh, there's a local group called the Haymarket Squares. And uh, last summer during the campaign, I found this song on their website. And it sort of highlights what we're dealing with today. It's called Buy My Vote. And it sort of takes the ultimate ironic look at Citizens United. It says, now that you're a person, I'd like to have a chat. I could use some money. You've got a lot of that. Spending out without limits is my idea of fun. So if we're both just people, let's get this deal done. Why didn't have the corporations play in the political game? I'm going to make democracy start paying off for me. The whole thing has become a cruel joke. I don't care what the founding fathers wrote by my vote. And then the second verse is, I used to think that voting was a patriotic chore. Election day was drudgery. The whole thing was poor. Now it's a seller's market. The Supreme Court doesn't care. So I'm going to be the first in line. I'm going to get my chair. I take MasterCard, Visa, PayPal, cash, and checks. By my vote. 